Got to put my thinking cap on for this video. So it was a 6-1 victory for Celtic against Hibernian at the weekend. Giacomakis getting on the score sheet. James Forrest getting his 90th, 99th and 100th goal for Celtic. And Dyson Maida getting on the score sheet as well. It was a much changed lineup for Celtic against Hibs as they sort of try this rotation basis in terms of the Champions League games on Wednesdays and Tuesdays. It was probably the right decision for Ange Postacoglu to change up the team. Now, I think we all are still a little bit surprised at how much he is sort of rotating, but I guess it's absolutely needed with the amount of running that you need to do in these games and the amount that he expects from the team. But major changes were made to this team at the weekend, and it was sort of back to the Ange Postacoglu swagger that you have been sort of used to over the last year from Celtic. And it was fast-paced non-stop ruthless football from Celtic in this game against Hibernian and it was nice to see because I think the last couple of weeks there have been difficult games of course against Real Madrid and against RB Leipzig in the Champions League but the league games have also been a little bit sluggish as well obviously we had that St Mirren defeat before the international window and then a couple of games after the Champions League games have been a bit lacklustre so it was nice to see Celtic be absolutely outstanding again and it's something that we're probably spoilt with and probably get too used to and then when it's not going our way probably spit out the dummy a little bit but it was a really really strong performance from Celtic against Hibernian a lot of changes were made to this team Ralston came in at right back Bernabe came in at left back we had Haksabanovic on the left wing Giacomakis up front we also had a change midfield of Matt O'Reilly Aaron Moy and Hatate that's going to be interesting to look at in this video and we also had a change up front James Forrest came in on the right wing as opposed to Abada or starting Maida so a lot of changes to this team I'll start with the two fullbacks because they're very interesting at the minute when you're talking about Celtic and how Celtic play I'll start with Alexandro Bernabe he had a brilliant game for Celtic down the left flank and he brings something completely different to Greg Taylor and this isn't going to be a Greg Taylor slandering video. By no means is this a Greg Taylor slandering video because I think Greg Taylor's been really, really exceptional for Celtic and probably the standout player overall in Celtic's Champions League fixtures. But what Bernabe brings, as opposed to Greg Taylor, Greg Taylor has really reliable passing, good running. He's really has taken to the inverted role in midfield a lot better than I, I would say most people have expected. But what Bernabe brings is a completely different thing. He is an athletic, fast, strong runner when it comes to being getting up and down the wing. And he's also not an inverted player. He is a player that likes to hug the touchline, get forward with expansive runnings, overlapping runs, and getting past opponents. So while he is still doing the inverting in the same manner that Greg Taylor does. He doesn't do it as much. He hugs the touchline a little bit more and he provides a lot of width for Celtic. And you saw the likes of Cameron carter Vickers, especially utilizing that long left pass over the top of defenses for Haksabanovic to get onto. And if it wasn't Haksabanovic, it was Bernabe. Or if it was both of them, Haksabanovic would get it and Bernabe was gone and he was an option to get a bursting run past the defenders and into the box. We saw that with Giacomacca's first goal. It, it, it just came from a pass from Hatate. Bernabe was overlapping and he played a one-touch ball across the box to Giacomacca. So a brilliant pass from Bernabe. So he brings a completely different structure to Celtic. And I think that is important when you're rotating these players. To bring something different, you can change your play up a little bit. You don't become predictable. And also, it gives you an option for potentially changing it up in the bigger games against the likes of Shakhtar, for example, coming up this week in the Champions League. So I think Bernabe was really excellent and deserves a lot of plaudits for his performance at the weekend. Anthony Ralston came in at right back as well, and I've been sort of Anthony Ralston's main fanboy over the last couple of weeks. I haven't been overly impressed with Juranovic. I don't want to be overly harsh with him either. I thought he has been playing well, and granted the level of opponents that he's playing against in the Champions League is different to what Anthony Ralston came up against against Hibs. But I thought Ralston was excellent again. His delivery and his long-range passing is really, really 
shining over the last year or so he hasn't really got that much game time this year I'm not sure why maybe it is just the fact that Ange trusts Juranovic that little bit more and to be fair I'm not saying that Ralston is definitely the answer but I'm just saying that he does deserve his chance and if he doesn't deserve his chance then there's no point in him being at the club and I thought he did really well at the weekend and the one of the goals came from an exceptional pass from Ralston that just took out three to four Hibs players it went straight through to the defense he just it was an amazing pass for a right back to be able to pick out and I just thought that he brought something that Juranovic hasn't been bringing to the play over the last number of weeks and that is good delivery reliable delivery his crossing was excellent his passing was excellent he was carving open the Hibs defense at times with his passing forward and it was just really refreshing to see brave passing from the defense and just before I finish up on the defense I should mention Morris Jens as well. A lot of the play was coming through Carter Vickers in terms of those long-range passes to Haksabanovic and sort of changing the dynamic of the, the play. But two of Celtic's goals came from brilliant passes from Morris Jens out of the defence, brave passes, breaking through the Hibs press and bringing Celtic forward up the pitch. So he deserves a little bit of a, a plaudits as well for that bit of play and the, the, bringing Celtic up the pitch with passing that he hasn't been able to do or show in the Champions League because that level has just been a little bit higher than what Hibs were providing at the weekend. Now to the midfield. The midfield was incredibly interesting in this game because we started with Matt O'Reilly, with Aaron Moy and Hatate, and all the will in the world you're looking at the, that team and you're thinking Aaron Moy is the setting number six and Matt O'Reilly's back up to the number eight. But it wasn't that. Matt O'Reilly was playing as the number six and Aaron Moy was playing at the number eight. And I think we saw another side to Aaron Moy's game because of that. He has been playing any time that he's played for Celtic this year, has been more or less off the bench in games that were either done and dusted or in games that, you know, Celtic just needed to get a little bit more con control. And he was coming on for Cal McGregor as the number six. And he wasn't getting creative roles within the side. Now, Aaron Moy played a really creative role within the Brighton side. He was a box-to-box -box midfielder more than he was, an, a, you know, an out-and-out number 10, but he was a creative spark within the team and using that really good passing range that he has. Now, old age would tell you that naturally he is going to just regress back to that natural number six role. It hasn't really worked out for him as that role. Maybe that's because he doesn't have the legs to do so. He's not physical enough to do so. He's not athletic enough to be that number six. I'm not so sure about that. I think he still will develop and maybe it's a, a role that he's just learning to do. But I think we saw a more natural role for, for Aaron Moy. And he he was really, really brilliant again in this role. The pass that he was able to pick out for James Forrest's third goal, it was just such a brilliant little piece of play that it, was, it looks so simple. But to be able to refocus his body shape and play that ball first time. It was vital for Celtic getting that goal. And he ha also had a brilliant ball over the top with his bad foot, the left-footed uh, pass he played over the top for Maeda's goal as well. So he got two two assists in this game. And he was much more creative. And you got to see a lot more of him in terms of what he can actually do. Where Whereas I think he's more restricted in the number six role. Matt O'Reilly, again, he's he is restricted in that number six role. I, I think you're not getting the best out of him when it comes to that or when it comes to making the most out of his attacking play but again for a player who is not a natural number six or hasn't really played that role all that often I thought again he was really really good in his defensive duties and that ability that connection that he's he has with the midfield to be able to link the play on the counter-attack I think it was really important given the miss of Cal McGregor over the next couple of weeks for Matt O'Reilly to step into that position it's going to be a learning curve for him it's not going to be ideal in the Champions League if he has to do it, but somebody has to do it. And if he learns and grows in that number six role, then that's just another option for Celtic to have as the creative spark within the number six role and the defensive uh, role that he's going to have to fulfill as well. So he will continue developing his football brain if he is forced to play in that position. Now we'll move to the forward line because there are some... Big talking points from the forward line. Haksabanovic started on the left. Jack and Mac is through the middle with James Forrest on the right. Now, obviously, James Forrest got a hat-trick, so it would be weird not to touch on him, but I'm going to leave him until the very end. Jack and Mac has scored two goals in this game. It's probably flattering for his overall contribution to the game, but a player like Jack and Mac is, 
if he's scoring two goals, then it doesn't really matter what else he does. He's there to score goals, and he was clinical with his first goal. The second goal as well is the goals that you want your striker to be scoring. So it was nice to see him getting on the score sheet and, and again, pushing for that starting place ahead of Kyogo. The left-hand side was Haksabanovic, and he was absolutely exceptional in the first half. He has a bit of a jota about him. He's not afraid to go at a defender. He has exceptional footwork. His passing, his crossing is probably better than Jota's, in my opinion. And his overall contribution to the game. He was Celtics out when it came to the forward play because, you know, James Forrest doesn't have the pace that he used to have. You don't have the pace or the running that Kyogo has in behind the, the defense with Giacomacchus playing there. Giacomacchus is a physical player. And I think Haksabanovic was just that creative spark within the forward line that was making things happen throughout the entirety of the first half and well into the second half as well. You know, he was probably taken off because of a knock, which Ange said that he picked up, just didn't want to risk him and didn't want to risk him picking up a more serious injury, which is absolutely fair enough. His job was done. He had created loads of chances for Celtic. He's going to get goals. He's going to be exciting. He's going to be a player that Celtic probably paid far too little for when when the, we look at the grand scheme of things a couple of months down the line. And it, it is good to have someone like that coming in and being that creative player in the forward line, especially when Jota is out injured. Because if you look at Celtic's overall structure in terms of the type of players that they have in that forward line. Giacomacchus is obviously a physical goal scorer. That's what he does. Kyogo is an all-round star, brilliant movement, really good at getting into the right position at the right time. Abada, great at you know arriving late at the back post. He can be clinical. He's a little bit off form at the minute, but he's a really clinical finisher when it comes to it as well. Maeda runs himself into the ground. Again, off form over the last couple of weeks, but he does put a shift in, absolutely. And then Jota is that player who can create not something out of nothing. Haksabanovic is the second version of Jota that we have. He is a really, really creative player. Exciting, gets bums off the seats. And that's what you want at Celtic. You want your forward players to be going at the defenders, scaring the life out of them every time you get the ball. And he's a smart player as well. He wasn't just trying to take on his man every time. He played some nice crosses across the box and, and was able to create a lot of chances as well. So I thought that was by far and away his best performance for Celtic so far. And I'm really excited to see what he does going forward now after that performance and seeing if he can pick up and continue to improve and push for that starting 11 spot ahead of maybe Jota. Maybe he's putting Jota out of the team. Maybe he's putting Abada and Maeda down the pecking order a little bit more. But this is what you want. You want continuous consistency within your players and also a consistency in players pushing each other for that starting lineup because the starting 11 should not be set in stone. There should be players able to push themselves into the starting 11. I think Haksabanovic has definitely done that. We'll finish with James Forrest because... 98th, 99th, and 100th goal at the weekend. James Forrest is a player that has taken a lot of slack. I actually had a video on the channel last year defending James Forrest and what he has achieved at the club. Now, not only has he scored 100 goals for the club, he's also won 20 major trophies for the club as well. He scored majorly important goals for Celtic when it comes to the Scottish Cup and League Cup and also the league as well. He has been a key player for Celtic over the last number of years. A lot of people questioned why he was getting a one-year uh, extension to his contract. And look, the questions are fair enough. It is fair enough to ask, why are we extending this older winger who hasn't really played all that much for us? Why are we extending his contract? Why are we letting uh, him build up his wages when he's not going to be playing? I think it was important to keep James Forrest at the club because of the turnover that Celtic have had over the last number of years. Scott Brown has left the club. He was a leader within it. Um, if you look at Chris Ryer, he left the club. Edward was a leader in a completely different way. He was you know, the best player that Celtic had. He left the club. There were so many players who had left that you're looking at the team, the experience that they had, playing not only in the Champions League but playing overall in, in finals and, and big games within the Scottish League and Callum McGregor was probably the only player left at the club in the starting lineup bar 
Joe Hart, who obviously played in the Champions League with a previous club that has Champions League experience and has experience at the highest level. And while James Forrest hasn't played all that much in the Champions League, that's not what it's all about. What he is there for and what players like this provide is intangibles that you don't see within the dressing room. He is a player who knows what it's like to play in the highest pressurized games. And that can be enough just to lean an ear to somebody like Abada, like Maeda, or anybody in the forward line who might be struggling with the occasion. James Forrest has played in the highest occasions and it's important to have these players who have experience within the team around the dressing room because they are good characters, because they push other players hard and because they're good players as well. James Forrest is not a bad player. You don't score 100 goals and have almost the same amount of assists with being a bad player. He is a very, very good player. He just potentially fell off the the wayside a little bit. It's amazing for him to get 100 career goals. I've always felt that he was a player that got a little bit more stick than he deserved, simply because he might be a little bit frustrating to watch. Some of his crossing can be a little bit predictable, but he's an exceptional player for Celtic over the last... 10 years and he will go down as one of the best Celtic players of all time and and that, that might sound like a silly or crazy sort of a, a statement to make when you look at the greats that Celtic had with Larson and Sutton and and all the rest of them but he's up there I mean he's in a really prestigious club with his goals and even more prestigious club with his assists and goals so there's no doubt that James Forrest will go down as a Celtic great and I think it was nice for him to get them all wrapped up <laughs> in uh, in one game because I, I'm not sure how, how many more games he's going to get or how many more opportunities he's going to get throughout the season so I was absolutely delighted for James Forrest. Right so that was Celtic 6 Hibernian 1 Celtic back to winning ways in the Scottish League or back to themselves hopefully this carries on thanks for watching folks we'll chat to you later good luck